He woke up in a daze, tired and hungry. He stood up slowly and looked around himself at the trees and fields for miles around. Where am I? He immediately noticed his voice was not clear, but as if it was coming from a tube. He felt his mouth, which was a big circle. What is this? He looked around at his body, which was brown and smooth, but it was made of wood. He had yellow hair bunched up in parts that were shaped like daggers. As they were thick at the head of his hair and got thinner until a point, he reluctantly touched his eyes, which hurt, so he instead felt around them and realized his eyes were quite large. He was a dagger scrub. Why am I a dagger? How do I know what that is? His questions got cut off by a sudden surge of pain, a giant migraine. He grasped his head hard and screamed. He saw and heard many things in that time, including people in places he didn't recognize. He then heard a strong voice. It sounded like an old man. You are the chosen one. You will use your power for the greater good. You must go against all who stand in your way with courage. He then heard other voices, which supposedly belonged to other people. The lurking evil who will stalk Hyrule until the end of time is a being we know as Calamity Ganon. Like I said before, the divine beasts will be taken over and the champions will die. So this is the thing that we were all desperately searching for. He didn't truly understand any of this, but then he heard one more voice. You are the savior. You will protect Hyrule with all of your power. This is what you always believed. Finn? Finn? Is that my name? Am I a savior? Please, I need to know. The yell scared away some animals, but no one else seemed to notice. If I am the savior, then I must protect everyone. Just as those voices said, he prepared a small campfire in the hours left in the daylight as he gathered food and materials for his protection. Sixteen years later, Gesseltown was a bustling area of merchants and entertainment just below Hyrule Castle, where everyone would go out of their houses to visit the circle. On this specific day, there was a large stage and many performers and singers were there to show off their skills. A small figure with a black hood and white mask wandered into Castletown intent on delivering a speech, a speech regarding the future and many questions he had. Finn wandered through the crowd and very few noticed him because of his small height. All right, almost there. I need to tell them what I saw, what I heard. Even if they don't believe me, at least I could have my questions answered. He walked up to the back of the stage to talk with a manager, who saw him and took out a notebook and pen. The man had a brown receding hairline and goatee. He wore a navy blue shirt and tie, along with green shorts and leather black shoes. He was slender and 57 years old. He also had slight wrinkles on his face, green eyes, and wore glasses. Name, Gondre said. My name is Finn, Finn replied. Last name, Gondre asked. Uh, I don't have one, Finn said confusedly. He looked up with confused face on his look. What kind of person doesn't have a last name? Gondre snapped back. I woke up in a forest, Finn said, but was interrupted by himself. He immediately covered his mouth as Gondre gave him more suspicious looks. Do you live in a forest? Gondre questioned. Yeah, Finn replied nervously. Reason of performance? Gondre asked Finn. What? Finn asked. I need you to tell me what you're going to be doing on stage. Otherwise, I can't let you on, Gondre said with reason. Uh, a speech, Finn replied quickly. A speech? No, no, I can't accept this. Unless it's some sort of song, dance, or magic act, I can't allow you on stage, Gondre said. And please, this is extremely important to me, Finn yelped. Oh, for the love of highly a fine, but make it quick, Gondre said. After the magician finished his act on stage, everyone clapped like a great thunderstorm. Finn then walked on stage, and everyone was confused about the small, disguised figure. Finn was nervous, however, and stayed silent for a couple minutes. 
He felt someone suck tug his arm. It was Gondre. Listen, kid, just tell him the stuff. <sighs> okay, Finn sighed. He looked back at the crowd. Though they couldn't see it, he was slightly nervous. This will be confusing to some of you, but I woke up in a forest, had a migraine, heard a bunch of voices, and I saw weird things. Finn told the crowd. As expected, they were all very confused by this, and one of them, a bird-like humanoid, whispered, Nonsense. Absolute nonsense. Are you lying to us? Finn was surprised, but also confused. He didn't expect someone to think he was actually lying. Uh, no, sir. I'm telling the truth. Okay, so who are you? My name is Finn. Suddenly, another voice called out. It sounded similar to the strong old voice Finn had heard all those years ago. Where are you from? I've been living in the forest for 16 years at this point, Finn answered. A guard jumped up in alarm with a scowl on his face. You will show respect to our king. Call him as your majesty. Oh, sorry, your majesty, Finn replied. Another question. What were the visions and voices you heard? Rome asked. I saw a giant purple monster circling the castle, a giant machine-like thing with blue lights that turned to purple. I also saw a blonde man with a sword and a gold in a navy hilt, and a blonde woman blasting golden light out of her hands. There was a pale man in black robes talking about corruption and divine beasts. Finally, the same pale man said that the people named Champions were going to die. Finn replied. Everyone was shocked by what he had said. They were wondering who this guy was. There was one more vision, Finn said quietly. <coughs> Someone coughed in the crowd. Finn was not happy with their distractions. Finn repeated himself. There was one more vision. He said it a bit louder this time. Then everyone looked back up at Finn, who proceeded to explain his final vision. The blonde woman was talking with someone, saying they were a savior, that this is what they always believed. Then she said my name, Finn. She said that I was a savior. Savior? What makes you think you're a savior? Rome answered. I... I'll tell all of you, face to face, Finn said confidently. He took off his black robe and white mask and revealed to everyone that he was a Dacus scrub. I know in my heart that I am special, that I will be your savior. I decided since then that I will help all of you to create the perfect world. Finn had expected everyone to cheer or agree, but they all had shocked faces. King Rome, however, he had pure terror and hatred in his mind. No. 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 I will not allow you to take anyone again. Whoa, what are you talking about? He answered. King Rome, now enraged at Finn, drew his royal claymore. Leave now. Okay, 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 Finn replied quickly. He immediately ran off the stage to the entrance at Boo's house. King Rome calmed down and told everyone that all future stage performances of that day were being shut down. Dang it, kid, just cost me the whole show. The next day. Finn awoke from bed and was wondering why Rome had yelled at him and demanded him to leave. He was very confused about all of this. <sighs> what am I supposed to do now? Finn said to himself. He looked up at a map of Hyrule he had purchased two years ago from a traveling merchant. As he examined the various places he could visit, he saw a blue palace in Laniru, dubbed Zora's Domain. He was intrigued by the kingdom's icy design, and decided that he should pay a visit. Okay, Zora's Domain it is, Finn said in his head. As he went to get his bag and pack it with food, his knife, and other things, he realized that he should bring some sort of disguise. After all, almost everyone at the festival was shocked that he was a Dacus scrub. He decided to bring a new disguise, a boko shield shaped into a mask with large eye holes, and a brown hood and gloves. He put the outfit on, strapped his bag to a back, and headed out for Zora's domain.
two hours later. The domain was beautiful. It was made of an ice-like material that reflected light like water. There were many developments such as an armor shop, spa, restaurant, food, pool, hotel, and many others. The long blue line that connected all of these buildings were once a bridge, but more development was made into the space around that bridge to make Zora's domain a better living space for both Zoras and travelers. Wow, this place is beautiful, Vin said slowly. He walked to the main center, which was connected to the main palace with two large staircases. There was a second floor with small pools and waterfalls, and in the back of the center there was a large black object shaped like a dome. Finn wanted to investigate the strange dome, but there was a guard posted there, so he decided not to. He instead went to a library to the left of the center and sat down, pulling out a book for himself to read. About 23 minutes later, he was greeted by the librarian, who informed him that the library was closed. Finn said goodbye to the librarian, put his book back on the shelf, and went out. As he walked out, Finn spotted something that intrigued him. Hmm, what's this? Finn said quietly. The crowd had gathered around a female and male Zora, both were wearing some amount of jewelry. The male looked much longer and a little shorter than Finn. The female wore jewelry and had a trident decorated with several bearings. Who are these people? Finn said in his mind. As he walked toward the crowd, a sudden blast of red smoke burst through the main center, scaring the crowd away. I found the Zora champion. This should be an easy kill, Suka said to himself. The princess pulled out her trident and told Sidon to run away. She then saw Finn, who was surprised and still standing there. What are you doing? Go! Mifa demanded. Finn didn't want to run off, so he instead attacked Suka with his knife, who was caught off guard by this attack. A costumed child, thinking he could fight me. Idiot! At sixteen, a teenager, Finn answered. Age doesn't matter when you're dead, Suka snapped. He lunged at Finn with his sword, who was surprised and pulled out a shield from his bag. Finn was able to shield himself from Suka's hips and rolled to Suga's back and struck him there with his knife. Suga turned around and smirked behind his mask. Barely hurt. Oh no, Finn said in his mind. Suga then kicked him into a banister. Finn got up quickly and tried to slice Suga again. Suga blocked the attack and grabbed a Zora-themed pot that smashed it into Finn's face. Finn was hurt badly and then punched in the gut by Suga who then grabbed Finn's knife arm and threw his knife away. Such weakness, Suga snarled. He then squeezed his arm so hard it broke, then slashed Finn's stomach, leaving a big cut. Absolutely pathetic. Get out of my way, Suga snapped. Suga then kicked Finn in the face so hard, Finn flew back into a wall. The Zora princess was shocked and grabbed her weapon to fight Suga. Why are you doing this? She answered terribly. Suga, orders from Master Koga to kill you and every other soon-to-be champion, he answered. No, Finn said raspily. He somehow managed to pull himself in front of the Zora princess and stood up slowly and painfully. He looked at Suga angrily. I will never allow bad people to hurt anyone. She will leave this domain and never come back, Finn yelled. As his emotions grew, strange energy began to form around his hands and hair. The energy flowed like water and hand strands, hair strands, and it was glowing green. He didn't know what this energy was, but it seemed to be controlled by his emotions. As the energy grew in power, his mask, gloves, and hood began to rip, revealing his Deku form. So here you are. The Yiga clan has been looking for you. Is that so? Then come and get me, Finn snapped. Finn charged with incredible speed and punched Suga. The energy around his hand made his punch far more powerful than it ever could be. Suga was thrown back and landed on his knees. 
Considering your power, I suppose it is best that I report back to Master Koga. And with that, a blast of red smoke covered the domain center. Suga was nowhere to be seen, and Finn's strange energy started to vanish. However, Finn was highly exhausted after the confrontation and collapsed from exhaustion. Twelve minutes later, Finn woke up in an inn while the female Zora was looking over his body. A strange blue orb would appear and disappear from her hands as she placed them over his injuries. Are you okay? she asked. Yes, I feel okay, Finn answered before cutting himself off, as he realized that his mask and hood were torn, and his face had been revealed. So, what are you going to do to me? Finn asked. Heal you, she said. Finn, that's not what I meant. You know I'm a dagger scrub, Finn asked. And what's wrong with that? She answered. Oh, I thought you would be shocked, Finn said. I was, but I'm glad that you did that. You saved my life, she told him. Oh, you're welcome, but he was cut off by her. Be careful next time, you can get hurt. <sighs> okay, Finn answered. As she finished her healing, Finn got up from the bed and started walking to the door. So, is it okay for me to leave now? Yes, you can visit whatever you like. Thank you, Finn said. He walked out the door and proceeded to go back home. It was well sundown. Two hours later, Finn was writing in his journal, wondering about the things that happened recently, wondering about why he existed, wondering about the strange power he had used against Suga. Finn looked at his right hand, which was glowing green as he suddenly thought of those powers. But the glow vanished. He couldn't control it yet. <sighs> so many questions, Finn said to himself.